One of the more common things we do during engagements is to pivot around the network or get remote shells on machines. Normal go-to tools such as Netcat are easily detected by network administrators. For this reason, we often turn to a tool named SoCat. SoCat is a tool that can set up network tunnels similar to Netcat, but offers some key features which make SoCat the preferred tool to use. The biggest one of these is encryption. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use SoCat to create bind and reverse shells, how to transfer files, how to use SoCat as a port forwarder, and how to encrypt connections. SoCat is a tool for bidirectional data transfer between two addresses. Just like its competitor Netcat, its many functions make SoCat a versatile tool. What makes SoCat so versatile and powerful is the fact that it can bind together different protocols, such as TCP, UDP, SOX4, SCTP, PTY, datagrams, stream sockets, raw IP sockets, OpenSSL, and any arbitrary network device. In this first example, we're going to set up a basic connection. This will show you the syntax and the structure that SoCat expects. For this connection, we need to create two SoCat instances, one with a listener and the other with a connect address. First, we need to set up the listener. To do this, we start with the D flag. This flag increases the verbosity. By using it twice, SoCat will print fatal errors, errors, warnings, and notice messages. Without these flags, SoCut does not produce any output about the connection. The next parameter is one of the two addresses which SoCut uses to create a connection. The format for this address is protocol colon arguments. Before using a new protocol type, look up the required parameters with the age flag. As we can see, there are a lot of protocols that we can choose from. For the listen server, we will use the TCP listen protocol. The TCP listen protocol requires only a single option, which is the port number that SoCut will be listening on. This number must be between 1 and 65,535. When we want to use ports lower than 1,000, we need to run SoCat as root. The second address is a protocol we want TCP listen to bind with. This can be another TCP connection, a file or an application. In this instance, we select the dash as the address. This means that we can use SCD out to send commands through the connection. When we run the command, we can see that SoCat starts listening on the port that we specified. Now that we've created the listener, we can set up the connection to it. We do this with practically the same command, but we change the protocol that we use to TCP connect. This protocol requires an IP and a port as its variable. The IP that we will set is the IP of the listen server, and the port we defined on the listen server. Similar as the previous command, we want to use a dash to signal the SCD out and the D flag twice to increase verbosity. When we run the command, we see that we establish a connection to our listener. Because of the SSD out flag we included in both SOCAT instances, we can type in both the terminals and have direct communication between the two terminals. When you want to write the output to a file, we can change one of the addresses of the commands to the open protocol. This protocol opens a file that is given as an input. The create flag creates a file. We then require a flag that indicates how we should act if the file is present. When we append the trunk flag to a file, SoCat will overwrite the file if it's present. The exclusive flag will prevent the file being overwritten if it exists, and with the append flag we append to the file. Sending the contents of a file is a lot easier. We can do this simply with the file protocol, which takes a file as its argument. When we execute the commands, we can see that we transfer the contents of the file over to the other client. To use SoCat as a port forwarding server, we can simply change one of the addresses to a network protocol that is supported. This can be a listen or a connect protocol or even change from a UDP to a TCP connection. Using this technique, we can evade simple firewall rules during engagements. If for example a firewall doesn't allow connections over UDP, we can proxy a UDP connection to a TCP connection to circumvent this firewall rule. One of the big features that SoCat provides over the wider known Netcat is that it's able to encrypt connections. Encrypting connections can help prevent defenders from listening into the traffic or from intrusion detection and prevention systems from triggering. The first thing we need to make for our encrypted connection is a certificate that will be used to encrypt the connection. We can use a self-signed certificate for this. To make this certificate, we use OpenSSL with the following line. 
This will generate two files, one named sir.key and the other one named sir.crt. We now have to combine them into a PEM file which SoCat is able to use. We can do this by getting both files into new file. Once we have done this, we now have a certificate we can use to encrypt SoCat connections. When we use a certificate, we no longer use a TCP listen protocol anymore, but instead use the open SSL listen protocol. This protocol requires not only a port, but also the certificate file we want to use. We can add the certificate file by pointing to it with the flag cert equals followed by the certificate name. Since we have created a self-signed certificate and are not using one provided by a valid certificate authority, we also need to add the flag verify equals zero. This disables the certificate chain verification. On the connection side, we replace TCP connect protocol with SSL connect and add the flag verify equals zero again to disable the verification of the certificate. To pipe the output from executable through SOCAT, we can use the exec protocol. This protocol requires an executable as an argument. When we use bin bash as the argument, we send a bash shell through SOCAT. This can give us a shell on the remote machine. When we execute SOCAT now, we create an encrypted connection that cannot be monitored by network administrators, which makes it harder for signature-based network security tools or admins to analyze our data. As we can see, SOCAT is a very powerful and versatile tool. And this video just scratched the surface of what SOCAT is capable of. If you learned anything, please leave a like, comment or subscribe.